Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. A longtime viewer of my channel who calls himself Madcap sent me a note and said, Steve, check this out. This might be the weirdest story that you've seen in quite some time, and I agree. Here we go. This is from the government's own Justice Department. Montana man pleads guilty to federal wildlife trafficking charges as part of years-long effort to create a giant hybrid sheep for captive hunting. <laughs> Okay, the man's from Montana. Okay, I, I get that. He pleads guilty to federal charges. Okay, I've, I've seen that before. Wildlife trafficking charges. Uh, okay, I've heard of that before. As part of years-long effort to create a giant hybrid sheep. <laughs> okay, that's, that's where it goes sideways. And by the way, for captive hunting, uh, I guess, is uh, the reason he's doing this. He's not just a mad scientist, but... The defendant worked to traffic Marco Polo sheep parts from Kyrgyzstan. He tried to clone sheep. He was also working with ewes, which is female sheep, to create hybrids in an attempt to traffic Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep parts. And so that's another, I guess, parallel uh, accusation. The Montana man pleaded guilty to two felony wildlife crimes a conspiracy to violate the Lacey Act and substantively violating the Lacey Act as part of an almost decade-long effort to create giant sheep hybrids in the U.S. with an aim to sell the species to captive hunting facilities. The man's 80 years old of Montana, so this means he spent the last 10 years of his life working on this. He's the owner and operator of a ranch, which is a 215-acre alternative livestock ranch in Vaughan. The ranch is engaged in the purchase, sale, and breeding of alternative livestock, such as mountain sheep, mountain goats, and various ungulates. <laughs> I believe that's the first time I've used the word ungulates on this channel. Please, someone look into that. The primary market for his livestock is captive hunting operations, also known as shooting preserves or game ranches. According to court documents, he conspired with at least five other individuals uh, between 2013 and 2021, to create a larger hybrid species of sheep that would garner higher prices from shooting preserves. He brought parts of the largest sheep in the world from Kyrgyzstan into the United States without declaring the importation. So apparently that's the problem. He's bringing the stuff across the borders without telling anybody properly. Average males of that species can weigh 300 pounds, and their horns can span more than five feet uh, that's the Marco Polo. It's a native to the high elevations uh, of Central Asia. They're protected internationally by the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, domestically also by the U.S. Endangered Species Act, and are prohibited in the state of Montana in an attempt to protect native sheep from disease and hybridization. This is a very touchy subject, but there are animals that have been brought places to be hunted that have gotten loose out of their enclosures and then gotten wild. That's problem number one. And then some of them have started breeding with the local populations of whatever else might be out there, and that's problem number two. So the man sent genetic material from the parts that he brought in to a lab to create cloned embryos. He then implanted the embryos in sheep on his ranch, resulting in a single, pure, genetic male Marco Polo Argoli, that he named Montana Mountain King. <laughs> that's, that's a big name to live up to, even for a sheep. The uh, court documents explain that the man worked with other unnamed co-conspirators to use that sheep's genetic material to artificially impregnate various other species, all of which were prohibited in Montana to create hybrid animals their goal was to create a larger and more valuable species of sheep to sell to captive hunting facilities, primarily in Texas. To move the prohibited sheep into and out of Montana, he and others forged veterinary inspection certificates, falsely claiming the sheep were legally permitted species. On occasion, he also sold genetic material directly to sheep breeders in other states. So it very well could be that this sheep does exist out there, not in the wild necessarily, but on these other hunting facilities. Court documents also describe how he illegally obtained genetic material from wild-hunted Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep in Montana. 
He purchased parts of these wild hunted sheep in violation of Montana law, which prohibits the sale of game animal parts within the state and prohibits the use of them on alternative livestock ranches. He transported and sold the bighorn parts in interstate commerce. This was an audacious scheme to create massive hybrid sheep species to be sold and hunted as trophies, said the assistant A.G. In pursuit of this scheme, he violated international law and the Lacey Act, both of which protect the viability and health of native populations of animals. The kind of crime we uncovered here could threaten the integrity of our wildlife species in Montana. This was a complex case, and the partnership between us and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service was critical in solving it, says the Chief of Enforcement for Montana Fish and Wildlife. The Lacey Act prohibits interstate trade in wildlife that has been taken, possessed, transported, or sold in violation of federal or state law. The Lacey Act also prohibits the interstate sale of wildlife that's been falsely labeled. The Act is one of the most powerful tools the United States has to combat wildlife trafficking and to prevent ecological invasion by injurious wildlife. For each felony count, he faces a maximum penalty of five years in prison, a fine of up to $250,000, and three years of supervised release. He is scheduled to be sentenced in July by the chief U.S. district judge there in Montana. And as pointed out earlier, the man is 80 years old. So the U.S. Fish and Wildlife in Montana's Fish and Wildlife investigated the case and several other attorneys worked on it. But like I said, the statement that this was an audacious scheme to create massive hybrid sheep species <laughs> is the kind of thing I never imagined I'd be talking about when I first started doing a show on YouTube called Lato's Law. And so, yeah, all kinds of strange stuff happening in the news out there. And occasionally people say, Steve, uh, you do a YouTube channel? I've, I've had people ask me that have never seen a single video I've done. And they go, what, what, what do you talk about? And I go, well, I talk about all kinds of stuff, but because I'm an attorney, I look for stuff that has a legal angle to it on some level. Now, don't get me wrong. I really like car stories and car cases because I like cars also. So the perfect story for me would be, I don't know, uh, civil asset forfeiture involving a Dodge Viper or a Superbird that was seized by federal officials and then uh, was forced to be given back to its owner. There you'd hit on several of the big points that I like to talk about. But I say, but I'll talk about anything in the news that I find interesting if it has a legal angle to it. And that's usually just the, 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 the main threshold is, is it interesting? Does it have a legal angle? And so I've told people, I talk about all kinds of different things. So now I can add to the list that I also occasionally talk about a man's illegal years-long effort to create giant hybrid sheep. <laughs> And I can't thank him enough because it's fun for us to talk about. But he got caught. Now, I know some people are going to say, but Steve, really, does the guy deserve to get, you know, five, ten years in prison for his wacky scheme to come up with this monstrous abomination of nature? Um, <laughs> well, there are laws on the books. We know what the laws are there for. And so they're trying to protect the native populations that are already out there. And so heaven forbid that a bunch of these things got loose and next thing you know, they're displacing the native sheep. Next time you go up in the mountains, you encounter some 900-pound sheep with a 12-foot rack. <laughs> and it tells you to get off the mountain. And yes, it speaks perfect English. <laughs> hey, this is science fiction, right? Anything can happen. So Madcap, thanks for sending it to me. From justice.gov. Montana man pleads guilty to federal wildlife trafficking charges as part of a years-long effort to create giant hybrid sheep for captive hunting. <laughs> Questions or comments, put them below. Otherwise, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Life is 10% what you experience and 90% how you respond to it.